Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. We're going to look at what the Christian and premarital sex, that idea of having sex prior to marriage. What does the Bible have to say about that? Well, he has a, a lot to say about that, as a matter of fact. Uh, sexual sin is is uh, continually forbidden throughout Scripture, as we've talked about in the past. We've talked about the homosexuality. We've talked about the LGBTQ+, plus, the transgenderism, and so forth. Uh, certainly, we've talked about adultery, and that is uh, that idea of, of, of sexual relations with someone other than one's spouse. And, of course, that is strictly forbidden in Scripture, but so is premarital sex. That idea of, of, of committing um, uh, sexual fornication or fornication prior to marriage. Now, I, may, I, I realize I'm talking to some people, and maybe you've already violated that in some form or fashion um, before discussing this, or maybe prior to being... Uh, trusting Christ as your Savior, or you fell after you've trusted Christ as your Savior. And the question is, is what are you going to do about it? Uh, have you repented of that sin and, um, and chosen to separate yourself from those, those vices or the temptation of committing that sin? Or are you continuing to do it, continuing to justify it? Well, he loves me. Well, we're going to get married anyway. Well, um, if I don't do it, he's, uh, I'm going, he, he's going to leave me or whatever else. And I keep saying he, but, uh, talking from the woman's point of view, but it's a man's responsibility and he should be separating himself as a, as a follower of God and not allowing that relationship to go into uh, places where that type of temptation could, could take place. And so you and I need to be understand that, uh, that God holds us accountable for these things and and we don't want to be held accountable for those things and if you've committed premarital sex uh, you need to confess that sin and forsake it there's it's there's no place for that in uh, among God's men and women we look at first Corinthians chapter 7 uh, starting in verse 1 it says now concerning the things of which you wrote to me it is good for a man not to touch a woman What's he talking about? He's talking about that sexual touch, that idea of uh, that sexual arousal, or maybe trying to satisfy one's sexual desires uh, with someone you're not married to. It is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless because of sexual immorality, because such temptation is out there. Outside of marriage, it becomes immorality, right? Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her and likewise also the wife to her husband. And so the idea there is that uh, sex is a blessing. It is not only for procreation or having children repopulating the world but it's also for recreation that idea of, of of a husband and wife enjoying that time that no one else in the world uh has ever had it's just you and her you and him that idea of of being together after a long hard day maybe you maybe you've had strife throughout the day and all of a sudden you guys come together and uh, there's something about that intimacy that can draw two separated hearts into one in a, in a, under the confines of marriage. But outside the confines of marriage, that blessing becomes a curse. Because all of a sudden now you've opened yourself up to uh, certainly a reputation, uh, a, a, a poor reputation or a, um, a disease or a, a, a pregnancy or, uh, you know, any number of things. Uh, a lot of times, uh, many times, this will turn into some kind of hostile situation. And it just kind of goes on and on and on of, of what, what, when we violate God's rule uh, or God's role in this whole thing of us 
being married when, uh, when we enter into that sexual relationship. Make no mistake about it. Uh, uh, the idea of uh, making love or sexual intimacy was given to a husband and wife. And anything outside of the confines of marriage either becomes adultery or it becomes sexual immorality or both. And so you and I need to um, understand this and, and separate ourselves. And as I said before, I may be talking to people who have... Um, you have violated this at some time in their life. And I thank God that he says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And our, we have a do over God. In other words, that um, when he separates us, as far as the east is from the west, our, our sins, he separated from us and dropped them to the depths of the sea and that he'll remember them no more. That, you know, we can start life anew and uh, knowing that we have a right relationship with God and how precious is that and so let me encourage you are you living with somebody you're born again but you're living with somebody and you know you felt conviction within your heart you know it's wrong as a pastor I advise you to find another place to live or he needs to find another place to live or get married or get married I'll be glad to marry you um, but you need to um, repent of that sin. Now, if you're he if you're listening to me and you say, Pastor, I have no conviction of this. I think I'm. It's only natural that I live this way. Now, that that number one it either exposes that you're not truly saved, or number two, your 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 heart is so hard against God that you do not want His will for your life. And I dare say. That if you do not repent, and you're a child of God and you do not repent, God will get your attention one way or another. And you don't want him to get your attention in that form or fashion. You need to repent in that relationship or get married. One, one, of, those, one of those sayings, or, or all of them. Repent and get married or repent and leave the home. Amen? This is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying God loves you and I love you as well and I'll talk to you soon.